the Joe Rogan experience. Has anybody ever come to you and said, hey, our community is kind of screwed up. We don't have a good food source here. Would you help us establish something like this? Yeah, I've, I've been. Uh, have you designed uh, these things for folks? Uh, not, I mean, uh, not for a whole community like this. Um, it sounds like that but, would be a great thing, though. Yeah. I mean, especially now when we're realizing that it's difficult when this, the food supply chain goes down or something mm -hmm. goes wrong and it's difficult to get food to people. Wouldn't it be great to have, I mean, I've always said this, that it would be great if you had, like, the neighborhood had, like, one large plot of land and mm. everyone in the neighborhood lived off that plot of land. Sure. Instead of, like, have a little mini Central Park in every neighborhood. Right, right. Um, you're talking my language. I mean, uh, the idea of, of uh, well, I mean, you're familiar with urban agriculture. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we have food deserts, right? Food deserts is a big, big problem. But a lot of times food deserts are in pretty rundown parts of, of the city that have vacant lots. And um, uh, there, there's, there's a lot of productive capacity in these places. I was uh, one of the interesting ones I was on was in St. Louis. And uh, these three young couples had come together, and they had um, they had purchased an old. It was an old um, crack house that the city bulldozed, and so there's this vacant lot. It was you know half an acre. It wasn't very big, um, half an acre. And these three couples, uh, they they got apartments nearby, like within you know two minutes walk, and it was in a pretty rundown area of the, of the city, a rundown neighborhood, and they just started farming in this in this half acre and told all the neighbors, bring us your food scraps. They got some chickens. They started making compost. They put up a little greenhouse. They put up a kitchen and um, very, very simple, poor boy, bootstrap, you know, nothing. And they quickly became a, a whole community of uh, um, whatever uh, place for kids to come because kids were mesmerized by the chickens. They had a worm bed, the plants growing, they cooked stuff. And I was there, you know, I was there with them for a couple of hours. And here come, here, here come kids down the sidewalk, you know, pulling a little red wagon with food scraps in it. And, and they're feeding the worm beds. And it's, it's fantastic. They were feeding like, you know, 30 families out of this old crack house foundation. That's amazing. And it was just wonderful. And they were doing it as a, as a gift to the inner city, you know, as a, as a gift uh, to the inner city. But I asked them, I said, so, so how much of St. Louis's food could be produced this way? They said, if you take out the dairy and the beef, you know, the, the, big, the big mega stuff, St. Louis could feed its entire city within the city limits this way. Wow. And that's true in Detroit. It's true in Baltimore. It might not be true in L.A., but the the but but here's the thing: we don't have to solve every single person's problem to start solving some. And and our problem is so many times I start down this path and somebody starts throwing at me the most extreme situation. And you know what? I don't have all the answers for the most extreme situation. You know the. The single mom of four minority in a food desert in whatever, okay? I don't have the answer to every single situation. But I'm looking at suburbia. I'm looking at, at incredible things that people are doing and opportunities. And if we just did what we know, um, I mean, I ran into a lady in, um, in, in Edmonton, uh, British Columbia, uh, Alberta. Uh, Alberta. Yeah, thank you. And... Um, she was 50, single lady, living in a fifth floor um, condominium, just wanted to, wanted to farm in the worst way. She had no money, no land, nothing. And she just had this epiphany one day. She said, I know I have one friend that has a backyard. She went to this friend with a backyard. She said, um, would you mind if I grew up like a 10 foot by 10 foot garden in your backyard? I just want to grow something. Friend said, sure, sure, sure. So she gave her a little 10, 10 by 10 plot started a garden well the lady's neighbor saw the garden and she said do you think your friend would put a garden in my backyard and lady said well no i'll ask well sure i met this lady 18 months after this initial conversation with her friend 
She was farming 18 backyards, had a part-time employee, was a full-time farmer. Her, her, all of her tools were on the side of her bicycle. She bicycled from spot to spot to spot with all of her tools. And her, she started a business called On Borrowed Ground ah. and Growing Food. So the thing is, is there creativity? Is there opportunity? Oh, it's up the wazoo. If we would become as interested in this as we are the latest dysfunction in the Kardashians <laughs> or, or, you know, the, the, yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The, the latest whatever. Yeah. And, and it, it's not that we don't have time for it. Not that we don't have money for it. If, if there's one really positive thing to come out of this pandemic, I hope that it's a restructuring of what's valuable in life. And if we can, if we can even grab a, a 30 percent bump in that value trajectory, it will have been the best thing that ever happened to That's us. That's a large bump. <laughs>